everyone's doing well, staying safe, happy, and healthy. Here's a big old bear hug for you all there. And I am going to do a fun art activity today. This art activity is not only just art, it's kind of like music and movement where it incorporates other domains like fine motor skills, cognitive, language, and sensory, to name just a few. So with this art, we're going to do a springtime theme and we're using real flower blooms as our art utensil to apply the paint. So I've got one from a bouquet and one carnation from outside in the garden. Smells so good. Um, and today I used watercolor washable from Crayola. Um, it's just what I had laying around the house um, from my nieces. If you don't have any watercolor paint, you don't have to just do watercolor. You could do tempura paint or any kind of paint that you have on hand. And if you run out of paint, there's always food dye. So if you want, you could always just get a little bit of water and to drop some food dye in that water. It's totally infant safe. It just stains a little unlike the washable. It will wash out eventually, but don't be surprised if your infant's fingers or clothing or something from the food dye shows up. Um, so today with the blooms, we're going to use this to apply the medium paint onto our canvas. And I used a filter, a coffee filter for our canvas just to have a different texture and to watch the um, watercolor spread out and because it's a coffee filter it could absorb water pretty well unlike construction paper or just regular printer paper. Um, if you're using tempura paint you don't have to necessarily uh, then put it inside of a holder like a cup or a dish um, or like I'm using a cupcake uh, baking pan. Um, you could definitely just do dots on to the canvas, whichever canvas you want, and then um, show your infant how to move the paint around and apply it with the flower painting utensil. So with the flower painting utensils, you want to get a flower that's going to be big enough for your infant to do a whole hand grasp because it's kind of difficult for them to use a paintbrush just like um, a regular um, older child's um, paintbrush or a crown. Um, so it's always important to show your infant how to manipulate and guide them on how to hold something that's a little bit bigger before you move on to something that's slimmer and thinner and then they would um, hold it kind of like a pencil or just with their two um, fingers or three. Um, so we want to still do that whole hand grasp and show them that they have control of the utensil instead of it falling out and maybe just doing the smashing of the bristles like in a paintbrush. You don't want to destroy your art utensils at home too early in the game. So with this activity, as you know, some infants kind of get, um, you know, just distracted or bored with it. But what's cool about when you use real flowers is that they crumble the harder and rougher you are with them. So once the flower starts to um, break apart, you could show your infant like, wow, look at what happened to the flower. And then it could turn into a sensory activity as long as they don't put it in their mouth. So definitely keep an eye on your infant during this activity and always choose flowers that they're not you know, allergic to or they haven't sneezed around or anything. Um, if you don't have blooms uh, available to you, um, you could always use um, anything that might resemble flowers. So if you have any um, artificial blooms at home or plants, uh, you could just snip a little, um, like they said, that's um, big enough for your, for your infant to do a whole hand grasp. Or you could get some leaves, like I said, that are not, you know, that are allergy um, free, that your infant doesn't get any reactions towards anything. Um, and if you get leaves, you just grab a bundle of leaves and then if you have like painter's tape, you could tape the bottom of the stems together to kind of make it look like a bloom for them to hold it almost like the stem and smash it. So uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a flower from your garden or a bouquet or a plant. Um, and so today I'm using watercolor um, and I put them all in one of the um, heart-shaped uh, cupcake little holders and I am going to just 
grab the carnation that's a little smaller. What's cool about this, you could always do a bigger bloom and a smaller bloom, you know, size different and texture different too. And just um, guide your infants if they don't um, follow your directions, you know, always give a demonstration. And if they still um, aren't following, do hand over hand and then just dab it on here. Now, if you're doing watercolor, it's not going to show the texture too much or a pattern because as you see it spreads. Um, it's more just about um, getting that fine motor skill movement, um, following directions and exploring um, the textures and the wetness of the paint and how it is applied to the coffee filter or canvas, whatever you're using. Um, but if you're using tempura, now that consistency is thicker and less liquidy, so it's going to maybe show some lines and maybe some impressions from the flower or the leaves on the uh, paper. So just keep that tempura paint kind of thin um, so it's not so heavy on the construction paper and you just have big blobs. Um, definitely show your infant how to be gentle, like dabbing it or swiping it like this, swiping it using their midline. Um, swirling it. Um, you could do, um, you know, having them just touch it and explore it. You don't have to have a specific technique just to let them know, like, these are all the different ways you can do it. Now, you could do this activity across from your infant or beside them. If you do it beside them or across from them, like I said, just guide them um, and show them how you're doing it, too. So, do the activity with them. Um, you could have your own bloom if you want. Here's my big one. I'm going to get some green in this and then you could show your infant as well how the green or whatever color you choose uh, looks on the flower. So um, then I smash it or I swipe it or I swirl it or I do like little lines and I move it around. I always make it a point to show your infant how to move the utensil around the entire canvas, not to just stay in one spot. Um, and let them focus on the big picture um, as well as what they're doing right at that moment. So it's always nice to um, point out, oh, use that spot. Oh, what about here? Or if you want, you can move the canvas around um, and show them a spot that they haven't gotten to yet. You could also do this activity with different colors um, to explore binary colors and what it looks like when you mix two primary colors together. So um, it could be a really cool science experiment in that way. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope to see you on one of our Zooms soon and I hope everyone's staying safe, happy, and healthy and miss you all so much. Big hugs. Bye. Today we're gonna read, You're My Little Cuddle Bug. You're my little ladybug, you brighten up my day. With rosy cheeks, you smile at me and chase my blues away. You're my baby bumblebee. You are so very sweet. You fill my days with lots of joy. Like honey, you're a treat. You're my caterpillar. You're ticklish through and through. I love to make you giggle and you make me laugh too. My shining moon, my shooting star, you brighten any sky. There's no one who's more beautiful, my darling butterfly. So when the night is beetle black and daytime's at an end, we'll snuggle up to cuddle bugs and sleep, my little friend. Thank you for listening to this short, cute story. I hope you guys are having a great week.